Welcome back and in our top business story, Middle East premium travel performed solidly in March, particularly in routes to Africa, from Europe and to the Far East. That's according to latest figures released by the International Air Transport Association. The Gulf nations specifically are enjoying acceleration in non-oil sectors of their economies, ensuring strength in consumer demand and positive developments in sectors such as trade, transport and tourism, according to the report. Globally, the figures released show growth in premium travel slowed in March, up just 1.9% year on year, compared to 4.1% in February. Premium traffic volumes have declined over recent months, consistent with weakening demand drivers, and a notable part of the slowdown is China, where business activity has been contracting since January. Premium travel within the Far East has also suffered as a result, contracting in two, by 2.2% in March. Markets linked to the US, where economic conditions continue to improve steadily, recorded improvement. North America to South and Central America markets saw premium passenger numbers rise at 5.9% and 7.9% respectively. The outlook for premium travel markets remains broadly positive, but improvements in the demand environment seen in late 2013 have shown some reversal. Improvements in advanced economies should sustain growth in premium travel ahead, but downward pressure from weakness in some emerging markets is likely, as according to the IATA. Dubai has ranked top in the world for its hotels and shopping experience as the host city of the World Expo 2020, leaving behind top tourist destinations New York City and London in these categories. That's according to results from TripAdvisor's second annual cities survey. The survey results are based on more than 54,000 responses from travellers who have recently written TripAdvisor reviews for featured cities around the world. Dubai ranked top for shopping, followed by New York and then London. The Emirate also ranked top for its hospitality, followed by Cancun, Mexico and Bangkok, Thailand. The ranking reflects the facilities that are available to tourists in the Emirate, which hosts the world's largest shopping, leisure and entertainment destination, the Dubai Mall. In the hospitality sector, Dubai is home to the world's tallest hotel, the JW Marit Marquis, and the world's most luxurious hotel, which is the Burj Al Arab. Last month, Dubai had been named as one of the top 25 places to go worldwide in the Traveller Choice Awards 2014 by TripAdvisor. Recent data by the DTCM also underscores the buoyancy of the hospitality industry that is on track to achieve the Emirates' ambitious goal, which is to host 20 million visitors annually by 2020. Official data shows that Dubai currently has a stock of more than 600 hotels with nearly 85,000 rooms. There will be an additional 141 hotel establishments added to the market, including 99 hotels and 48 hotel apartments, bringing the total to 751 hotel establishments and just under 114,000 rooms, as per the current development pipeline for 2014-2016. Et Salat, which this month bought a 53% stake in Maroc Telecom, has scrapped an offer to buy the remaining shares in the Moroccan firm. That's what the operator said in a statement on Friday. In a filing to the Abu Dhabi's boss, Et Salat said it had been exempted from making an offer to minority shareholders, which is usually required under Morocco's takeover rules. According to a local report, an Etisalat spokesperson separately confirmed that this meant the company had now abandoned a provisional offer, submitted earlier this week to the Moroccan authorities for approval, and that the authorities decided that due to public and national interest, Etisalat need not go through with its buyout bid. Etisalat paid 4.14 billion euros for Paris-listed Vivendi stake in Maroc Telecom, while the remaining shares are split between a 30% stake owned by the government and 17% of freely tradable shares. 
Under Bourse rules, acquiring companies do not need to offer minority shareholders the same price they paid in the original acquisition, and Etisalat did not reveal the price per share it had proposed.